This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video, specifically another simplified World Chalice combo tutorial video. I haven't done one of these in a little while, about a week or a little bit less than, but it's something that people want to see more of. So I figured I would start branching out into more of the obscure combos that people don't really seem to see at first first glance because they are very not obvious unless you've just been doing like tons and tons of playtesting with this deck. So for this video I'm going to be showing you specifically the Lee the World Chalice Fairy plus Brilliant Fusion combo and what this combo yields you is it yields you a draw 3 off Ningirsu and you end with an overall plus 5 or plus 6 if you want to count the dead Brilliant Fusion on the field because it is a card that can be used with Ningirsu to send a card to the graveyard so in theory it is still a card resource but even if you want to lowball it it is still just a plus 5 having drawn 3 cards and having five cards on the field uh, and stuff like that, or excuse me, four Link Monsters on the field, five cards being the Brilliant Fusion, but this combo isn't exactly obvious to people that are trying to figure out combos at first glance because the thing that you know about Brilliant Fusion is that Brilliant Fusion is literally, usually, just there for you to get access into your Lee. That's basically what the card has been used for in almost every combo instance that you can think of. But if you already have the Lee in your hand to be normal summoned or special summoned off of a World Chalice effect, then the Brilliant Fusion seems like it's very redundant. However, what it does do for you is it allows you to access another way into getting your Venus on the board in, in through some, some weird play sequencing that, like I said, isn't obvious at first glance. But so, without rambling on too long, let us just get straight into this and let me show you how this combo works. But it is strictly a two-card combo. Uh, it does not require any additional cards, although having additional World Chalice names in your hand does make it a little bit smoother in the later stages. Also allows you to do some certain things, but I will say that this combo, and as well as every combo that involves normal summoning Lee as one of your first actions, is very weak to Ash Blossom and Joy Spring because you're either going to be using uh, like World Legacy World Chalice in a way that you can't mask it, so it can be Ash Blossomed, or you're going to be transmodifying Lee away, and thusly you get Ash Blossom there as well. So all of the combos where normal summoning Lee is one of your first actions are definitely very uh, very susceptible to certain cards. So anyway. So you have three other cards in your hand. This two-card combo doesn't require anything else, but like I said, other cards make it smoother. But So your first action is going to be to Normal Summon Lee, the World Chalice Fairy, and you're going to be adding World Legacy World Chalice from your deck to your hand. Now the next thing you're going to do is you're going to activate this Brilliant Fusion. And so what are you going to send if you're not going to be you know, needing access into Lee? Now most people play Christia so they can like revive Christia in these situations, but honestly it's just better to send the Agent of Creation Venus from your deck to the graveyard alongside whatever Garnet card you're running because you're able to summon it off of Aurum and get tons of resources back into your accessibility pool. But so you Brilliant Fusion sending Venus to Grave, summoning your Gym Knight Seraph Knight from your extra deck, and then you perform your additional normal summon here tributing the Gym Knight Seraph Knight to Normal Summon World Legacy World Chalice. Now this is where I said that like this combo really can lose to Ash Blossom and Joy Spring really hard because at this point you're going to link with these two into Aurum, the World Chalice Blade Master, and from here your World Legacy World Chalice is going to trigger its graveyard effect. So if they have Ash here, then I mean, you had to put them on better habit, honestly. It kind of sucks that that's the case, but it's just, it's one of these things where unless you had other World Chalice cards in your hand, like normals that you could have been throwing onto the board to make Imduk um, very easily, like you can't really mask the World Legacy World Chalice, unfortunately. But off of the World Legacy World Chalice, if it resolves, you're going to be summoning World Chalice Guard Dragon, specifically in one of the Aurum Arrows, and you're going to summon Beckon by the World Chalice in somewhere where it's not being pointed to. That's actually very important uh, in terms of like, this has to be what you're pointing to, because you want to be trading this card out. Uh, but So you're going to use Orm's effect, and you're going to pop the World Chalice Guard Dragon, and you're going to revive the Agent of Creation Venus, and you're going to revive it all the way over in the right-hand most zone, or whatever zone you're using. You can reverse these instructions if you're using the left zone, uh, just, just keeping that in mind. But So you're going to use your Venus that you've just put on the board to pay 1500 and you're going to summon all three of your Shine Balls from your deck. So you've accessed your, you've accessed your Venus without having to use Transmodify or Hard Draw the Venus, make, making Brilliant Fusion another way to access Venus, giving this deck even more you know strong two-card combo sequences. But so from here, you're going to link with the Beckoned by the World Chalice and one of the Mystical Shine Balls into Ebe, the World Chalice Priestess, in the zone that Aurum is pointing to towards the middle of your game map. 
Now from here, you don't want to. You're not going to be using Venus anymore for the rest of the game, so you can might as well just go ahead and get rid of it uh, because we don't have any easy like accessibility into making Digusto Emerald here, unless we like draw Soul Charge or Rescue Rabbit or something off of like our starting other three cards or the three cards we draw from Ningirsu, But that's still something that could be done at a later date, and you could always rotate the Venus back. But so you're going to link with those two cards into Proxy Dragon. It doesn't really matter where the Proxy Dragon goes, as long as you have a free open slot to uh, link with later as well. But then you're going to link with the Mystical Shine Ball that is left over into Imduk, the World Chalice Dragon. And then from here you have World Chalice Guard Dragon still in your graveyard. So you have a couple of different options that you can go down here in terms of routing. Uh, there are plenty of different options that you can go down, but the most basic one is you're going to use World Chalice Guard Dragon's effect to banish and bring back either Beckoned or Mystical Shine Ball. Uh, as a monster that Eve is pointing to. And then you're going to link with it into your Link Spider or another Imduk. It honestly doesn't really matter unless you have other World Chalice cards in your hand. But at the same time, if you had other World Chalice cards in your hand, you could have done a completely different action completely in general. So there's that to consider. But So you'll link with the Proxy and the Link Spider into your Ningirsu. And your Ningirsu here is going to have three World Chalices being pointed to it so you get to draw three additional cards. So, off of your starting two-card combo, plus the three cards that were in your starting hand, you still have the Brilliant Fusion sitting here, which isn't a real resource, I know, but it is still something that if you are going second and performing this combo, then Gearsu does get the ability to send this card to the graveyard to send a card from field to grave that your opponent controls, so it is kind of a resource in that sense, so it can sort of kind of be counted as like a phantom resource. But uh, or like a fake resource, but even with just the resources you do have that are hard, like combo potential resources, you have these four link monsters on the board, plus three cards in your hand, and that is a plus five overall because you started with a two card combo to do this. Uh, now your other options that you have for how you could construct this going up to the point to summon Ningirsu, if I could back up just a little bit, at the point where you have Proxy Dragon and Mystical Shine Ball on the field without using your World Chalice Guard Dragon's graveyard effect, there's a couple of different actions that you could do to actually make this play a little bit stronger at the expense of using future play opportunities. And so if you want to preserve your World Chalice Guard Dragon's graveyard effect for later in the combo sequence, which definitely has its values, then you could just use Lee's graveyard effect instead since you haven't used it in this combo sequence. And what I mean by that is, since you have Imduk on the, on the board and Proxy Dragon here, send the Mystical Shine Ball from your field to grave to add Lee back to your hand. And then from here, instead of having the Link Spider be wasted out of your extra deck, you get to link with Imduk and Proxy Dragon back into your Ningirsu. And then your Ningirsu will be Chain Link 1, your Imduk will be Chain Link 2, masking the Ningirsu from possible things like Ghost Ogre or Ash Blossom, specialing your Lee from your hand here, and then you will still draw three cards, and you still end up at the overall plus five in terms of resources that you had before. Now, there are definitely some merits to doing this over the other way that I showed you. Uh, one being that you keep the pro the uh, the extra Link Spider into your extra deck because you don't use it with the Shine Ball. Also, you keep World Chalice Guard Dragon as a resource in your graveyard to extend your play further. So, I honestly prefer this one, but I wanted to show you both, essentially, because you can do it two separate ways. So, hope I didn't confuse you by rewinding it a bit and then doing it a different way, but it should be pretty easy to follow. But so this is basically what I want to show you because I hear a lot of people in my comment sections and through like various forms of contacting me that they're like, why don't you play Christia? You could do the Aurum play with like Lee Brilliant Fusion. But if you actually like dissect the play, that's not really a good play because it doesn't solve any of the problems. It's really like you're summoning Christia and just hoping that your opponent has literally nothing. <laughs> like that's really how that play string operates. Whereas if you do it this way, you get to draw more cards and you actually just go very, very plus on your like sequence because you're able to make firewall dragons now you're able to do a lot of different stuff there's so many different like extendable plays that you could do from this point without even requiring additional cards in your hand because of the guard dragon being here and because of your ability to make firewall dragons and do stuff the orm has used its effect but that's fine overall it's fine and it's not going to be a huge detriment to your overall play sequence because that means you can go ahead and link away with it without having to worry about wasting value and all of that sort of stuff so that's two outcomes for this play i really like this deck's potential to do simple two card plays like this that are very easy to hard code to your memory and that's what i'm trying to do with these videos so if you like them then definitely let me know in the comments down below but anyway as always guys 
guys, thanks for watching, and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Drop a like if you want to see more, subscribe if you're new here and want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! videos, and links as always are in the description to my Facebook as well as my personal Patreon page. If you like my content and want to support my ability to continue making content directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. It also gets you access into monthly raffle giveaways for boxes of Yu-Gi-Oh! product or something comparable. It also gets you access into my private Discord server. A bunch of different reward tiers are available if you want to go check those out. But, as always, special thanks to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, as well as Troy Perkins, as well as everybody else that is currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You help a lot in terms of what you allow me to do for this channel, essentially, in terms of upgrading and quality control and all that sort of stuff, and you have my eternal gratitude as always. But if you really like my content and want to help the channel grow, then I definitely encourage you to share these videos around with your friends and all that sort of nonsense. Uh, if you think they'd like my content, if you think it would help them, then definitely share it around and maybe encourage them to subscribe as well. Share it in Facebook groups, Twitter, Reddit, whatever you want to do. Definitely share my videos around. I encourage it. It would help the channel grow a ton. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. And as usual, guys, take care. I will see you in the next video.